So if you're watching this video, you might think you're having a nightmare or you might think you actually died and went to hell. But rest assured, you're okay and you're just sitting there watching YouTube. Okay? Now, in previous videos, I talked about the noun complement. I talked about how it's seemingly a modern innovation, a contemporary thing, not so much traditional. But the joke is kind of on everybody. Because the noun complement, though it seems like a, a, a new concept, has always been in grammar from the beginning. And the beautiful thing is the noun complement has essentially hidden in plain sight. It is hidden in plain sight, and I'll show you what I mean. To this point, I talked about the noun complement, and I said in my system of grammar in my brain, there were four examples, okay, four forms. One was the noun complement in the form of prepositional phrase. The noun complement in the form of infinitive or infinitive phrase. The noun complement as a noun clause. And one in the form of a proper noun, as in my sister Jenny is athletic. Now, most people nowadays would consider this in a positive. But in my other videos, I showed that that's really not true. Okay? I talked about that at length. I showed this paper. I talked about it. I tried to show the difference between the noun complement and the appositive. So I don't need to go over that too much. You've already seen that. All right. And as far as the prevalent, ubiquitous nature of the noun complement, in other words, showing up all over the place in English language, at least, in this demonstration in a previous video, when I showed the different forms of that noun clauses, I showed that when you speak these sentences, what you're really saying in the brain deep down inside is this. And on the deep level of what you're speaking with that, that noun clauses, all right, when you're speaking, the concept of noun complement keeps popping up. In these six examples of that noun clauses, the underlying theme, the underlying essence, the little secret gem hidden in there is the noun complement. You can review my other videos, but you'll find that the noun complement really is all over the place. So I just showed you the four forms of noun complements in my system and in, in my thinking, okay? But there are more. And because of time constraints, before I couldn't get into it. So let's go there now and see if we can uh, not take five hours. <clears throat> okay. I look at names. Most people don't look at names. They don't talk about names. You find very few videos on names. But let's say you have a Western name. All right. Let's say Europe or America. Western. Jenny Lynn Keller. All right. Jenny Lynn Keller. And this would be the first name, Jenny. That's what they call it. And they would call this her last name. Or if you were an, um, in an Eastern country, let's say China, and you had a name, Li Shifeng. Okay, Li Shifeng. You would say, this is the first name. And you would think this is the last name. Okay, and that's kind of true. You could, you could use the convention, the system, first, middle, last. Or you would call it technically forename meso name and surname that's what people call this they use these terms frequently but they're not good you see in the western culture okay it, with the individualist mindset the individual is important okay then you have the the given middle family name order and and we read here uh, left to right, okay? Now, in the Eastern sense, all right, which is more of a collectivist sense, okay, uh, philosophically speaking, you have the family name first and the given name, okay, second. So here you have the given name first, 
the family name last. And here with the Chinese name, you have the family name first and the given name after that. Now, do you see the difference there? Okay. Now, I say that today because it's important that we use for naming names, nomenclature of names, that we use the given and family name terms, given and family, okay? So here we see, again, Jenny was a given name, and there's a middle name they gave her, all right? But we don't really know what that's called yet. And then they have the family name, and that's her name, okay? So, so the question here is, is, is it really a middle name or a meso name in the technical speak? And I say, kind of like, no, kind of no. Okay, so let's take a look at this. In my previous video, I had the sample sentence, my sister, Jenny, is athletic. Okay, the sister was the noun, the word sister. Jenny was the noun complement. I talked about that and I kind of proved it. Okay, now Jenny is a proper noun. Jenny's a proper noun. And this sentence shows clearly, okay, because of its structure and punctuation, that there was more than one sister. I have more than one sister. My sister Jenny is athletic, so that we have more than one sister. Okay, make that clear. Now, you're back to Jenny is the given name, all right, and Keller is the family name. They're all proper nouns. So when I thought about noun compliments many years ago and I was teaching my children in homeschool, um, I didn't go this deep because it wasn't necessary. But the point was, I thought there was something there that should be noted, should be mentioned, okay? So when you have a sentence, you have syntax and you have a, a, a structuring and ordering of words to make a complete, proper sentence. Well, just, just like that, you have syntax in action in play when you, when you work with full names. When you work with full names, there has to be an order, a structure, okay? So the syntax of naming giving a person a name, assigning a name, is the way in which names are put together to form a full name. Now, if there's a syntax and there's a structure, a basis for this, then we have something. Okay, now we're back to noun complements. Okay, I just tried to show you how, how on God's earth can you get this proper name thing mixed into the noun complement category. Well, here's how you do it. You have Jenny Lynn. Lynn, often referred to as a middle name, is actually a noun complement. You have to ask the question, does it rename Jenny? That's what an appositive does. It renames something. But no, it's not renaming Jenny. It's adding. It's complementing. All right? Does it complement the word Jenny? Well, sure. Lynn, which, he, which ordinarily would be referred to as a middle name, is a noun complement. So here we have Lynn, all right, is a proper noun. It's a noun complement. And it's complementing a proper noun. It's complementing a proper noun, which is a name. It's a name. So... It's not only a noun complement, but more specifically, it is a name complement. It's a term I, I made up a long time ago, a name complement. But it's still a noun complement. Now, just as in this sentence, we see that because of the noun complement, that, that I have more than one sister. Okay, we see that clearly. But what if in your community, your school, your town? What if you have more than one Jenny Keller? Well, you have Jenny Lynn Keller. We've already met her. But what about the other one, Jenny Sue Keller? Now you see here, 
it has to be a noun complement and not an a positive. It doesn't rename because it's restrictive. In other words, we see here clearly there are more than one Jenny Keller. Do you see what I'm saying? I followed the convention of restriction with noun complements, all right, in the sentence sense, and I took that concept and moved it to the full name sense. Just take a full name, all right, and use the same concepts, and you see that this is a critical term here, this complement, because it differentiates between the two Jenny Kellers, okay? And you say, well, what do we really have here? We have Jenny Lynn, or you could call her J. Lynn. The Jenny is abbreviated, all right? Or maybe somebody assigned her another name, another given name, Kitty. It's a nickname, okay? What if somebody did that? What do you have? Well, you have Jenny Lynn, and you have your given, and you have your complement. But what happens is, semantically and grammatically to make sense, they have to join together to form the complement, Jenny Lynn, and here's the noun, okay? This is complementing the noun. Or you could say J. Lynn Keller, you'd have the complement and the noun, but see, these two things here had to combine to form a complement. It's a morphing, okay? And what if you have Kitty here, Kitty Keller? All right, Kitty is a compliment, but what, what was Kitty back here? Kitty's a nickname, okay? Is it a noun compliment or a positive? Well, I have to stop there on that particular point because that's a whole other video and it will take too much time. So let's just, let's just accept that and let that go for now. So what we have, we still have a good thing here. I'm not a teacher, by the way. I, I'm not qualified to teach anything. I have no education, but I want to share ideas because uh, young children and new students might find them useful. So in my system, in my mind, noun complements are popping up all over the place. You say, oh, that's a contemporary descriptive form of grammar nowadays, noun complement. But no, it's always been there. It's been there ever since sentences were formed. So what do we have? Noun complement forms in my mind. We have the noun complement as a prepositional phrase. It could be an infinitive phrase or, or just an infinitive. Uh, it can be a noun clause. I talked about that at length in previous videos, right? Those three. I talked about the proper noun as a noun complement. My sister, Jenny, noun complement, not a positive. And the positive would need commas here, and that gives it a whole different meaning. That If you have commas there and it's in the positive, you're saying, my sister, Jenny, only one sister. Noun complements don't do that. They don't do that. Okay? Now, and then today I showed you the name complement number one, Jenny Lynn Keller, with Lynn being the noun complement, which is actually a name complement, Okay? And then you have name complement number two, which is the combined, Jenny and Lynn is combined to make a noun complement, right? And that's noun complement number two, but here's the key thing, here's the beautiful thing. I just showed you all this, it took 14, 15 minutes, and so far now in my system, in my brain, we have at least six noun complement forms. But the beautiful thing is, look at this, the first five are anaphoric. You see, the complement complements something previously given to us. It complements, it kind of points backwards. This, this one here, name complement number two, is canaphoric. It complements something that's ahead, okay? You see, Jenny Lynn Keller. It's complementing something cataphorically in that direction, whereas the other five go that way. You can study this on your own, but that's it. I don't want to take forever and ever, but that's more noun complement forms that I couldn't do before because my videos take too long. 
Um, and the noun complement is ubiquitous. It shows up all over the place, everywhere. Just like, remember I talked about adjective complements. Well, these, like noun complements, were hidden in plain sight. The adjective complement, if you understood my video, basically is kind of tucked away and hidden inside the predicate adjective. You see, it's inside, it can be found inside the predicate adjective. Okay, does anybody understand that? I hope so. Thanks for being incredibly patient, and I hope to see you soon. Good night.